Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick video showing you my Tenryu Wakazashi. This Wakazashi has been completely worked over. I rewrapped the handle in black cotton. And I actually removed the raised skin. The reason why I removed the raised skin is because this sword had some pretty bad quality raised skin. So I didn't want to use it. And historically, actually, not all swords did have raised skin. So, it's not completely historically inaccurate to have a sword that doesn't have raised skin. Of course, the form that we know of the Japanese sword does have raised skin, but historically, they didn't always have it. So since I didn't use raised skin, I did paint the wood underneath uh, black to help everything blend in better, and I replaced the makugi, which are the retaining pegs, with delrin. Delrin is a modern, high-strength plastic. It may sound kind of crazy to use Delrin, but a lot of high-end sword makers are going to Delrin, or at least giving it as an option uh, as opposed to the bamboo. So, I used Delrin. I also modified the Suba and the Sepa a little bit. The sword actually has a Kozuka, as you can see. And years ago, I did open up this uh, hole right here. So I opened it up just a little bit more. I smoothed out the metal in there with my Dremel tool. Uh, I already had the SEPA on this side contoured, but I didn't have it contoured on this side right here because obviously that hole doesn't get used. But I wanted it contoured anyways just to make it look better. The reason why I had to modify the holes is because the suba on the sword actually came backwards, um, which is pretty common on the lower priced swords. But the problem is, normally that'd be okay, just flip it over and it's not a big deal. However, they didn't make this hole for the Kozuka to pass through, so it was actually in the way. It, could, it was actually bending the blade of the Kozuka a little bit, but this hole wasn't. So I just opened up the hole and, you know, fit that to go through. For those of you who don't know, the oval-shaped hole is for a Kozuka, and this other hole is actually for a Kogai, which this sword doesn't have, but the Kogai is a little uh, skewer. And the other way to tell is on a Japanese sword, the more fancy side of the Suba faces out because when you're wearing it, that's what's going to be seen, generally. You know, people might be able to see the back, but that's not as important when you're walking forward. The front is what's important. As you can see, that is the more decorated side than the back, which is actually pretty common historically as well. I also refinished the Saya in a satin black. This originally had a high gloss black Saya, um, I'm not fond of high gloss black sayas personally. Number one, I'm not crazy about their looks, but also generally speaking, they take damage easier than saya finishes that are more like this. I also changed the sagio to a nicer quality sagio. I tasseled at the ends, as you can see, and it has a little fancy knot there, which I like. I also changed the Korigata and the Kojiri to horn. On the Korigata, it was originally a thin wooden Korigata, which I've had break on me before, so I'm not fond of those. Uh, so I just replaced that with a horn Korigata that I had laying around. And this originally had a wooden Kojiri. So, uh, I would have left it if it wasn't for the fact that I shortened the Saya down. Now, the reason why it is that I shortened the Saya down is because of this. This was originally a katana, and I cut it down into wakazashi length. Obviously, I also cut down the ska. I wanted to kind of make this the big reveal, though. So here's an up-close of the tip. This is what's called Satsuma Age. And the tip is ground, basically, backwards of a normal sword. 
This is a normal sword right here. Both of them right now have the edges faced the same direction. And you'll notice that the tip is ground backwards. So on the normal katana blade, the edge goes up to meet the spine. On this one, the spine goes down to meet the edge. The reason why this tip is shaped this way is because this is to mimic a sword that the blade broke. Historically speaking, this is how a broken sword uh, was repaired if the blade was still usable. I'm going to go more into another video on the reason why Satsuma Age blades were shaped this way, but to summarize it for this video, this is the way that a broken sword was repaired to make the point as usable as possible without having soft steel at the tip. I also removed the wire brush hamon that this sword came with. I'm not fond of wire brush hamon. If a hamon isn't real, or at least acid etched, I don't even want the hamon on the blade, personally. I also touched up the edge on this one. This one here I did dull down years ago for practice, so I sharpened it back up so that it is a usable edge. I wasn't sure how I would like the look of the bohi running off the blade, but I actually think it's pretty cool looking to have the bohi run off the tip, and the other side it runs into the habaki. So the blade length now is 17 and a half inches. This was originally a 27 inch blade, and the scow length is a little bit longer than seven and a half inches. The reason why I made the scow this length is because at this length, if I want to, I can still squeeze my second hand on the scalp. And some sword styles do, at times, grab the wakizashi with a second hand just like this for more power or even for hooking with the scalp, hooking arms, things like that. But at this length, I can still use it normally but I also have the option of putting a second hand on it if I need to. Since I shortened the scot, I obviously had to shorten the tang. As you can see, it is within proper range. This is a little bit longer than what's generally seen nowadays. This is one inch shorter than the scot. Generally speaking, it's about an inch and a half on most modern swords. On a lot of historical swords, it was even shorter than that. I was actually going to go only a half inch longer on the ska, but I decided to go a little bit longer at the last minute, which made the ska just a tad bit longer. Not a big deal, this is still within usable range. On a modern sword, ideally you don't want the ska to be any more than two inches longer than the tang, ideally. I also rounded the end. Generally speaking, this is a more pointed shape. I made it round. Um, I generally like the round shape just a little bit more. Or to me, it's more refined looking. And I also chamfered the makugi holes, which is nothing more than taking a bigger drill bit and removing the burrs. This sword had burrs on the makugi holes. I also filed off the burrs on the tang on both sides here. So this is the way it should be. Um, a tang shouldn't have a bunch of sharp burrs on it. So that's pretty much it. That is my Tenryu Wakazashi. Now some of you may be wondering why did I shorten a katana instead of just buying a Wakazashi? Well, I already had this sword. I didn't want to spend money on a new sword. I already had this sword. This sword wasn't really being used. You know, obviously I have nicer katana, so this sword here just wasn't really getting used, so I decided to make it into a blade that would get used uh, in my collection. And this sword um, was a little bit of a redundancy in my collection. The only thing really unique about this sword was the suba shape and the fact that it had a kozuka. The blade shape wasn't unique. Nothing else really on it was unique. So I decided to make it fill a niche that I didn't have in my collection. And that niche was having a Wakazashi and a Satsuma Age blade. 
So if any of you would like me to do this to one of your swords, I can do this for you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do run my own business. Many of you know me personally and know that I run my own business. Some of you have even sent swords and things for me to repair and customize. But there's a lot of new viewers and not all of them do know that I do run my own business. I have my own website and I am going to school for gunsmithing as well. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll see you next video. See ya!